<laughs> hey chums and welcome back to another video. You may have noticed that I've been absolutely terrible at uploading YouTube videos recently, and I say recently, that's probably for like the last couple of years, but luckily, sometimes I make plans that are set in stone, which means videos have to happen, and this week is one of those weeks, because I'm being joined by one of my absolute favourite cake talents in the whole industry. I've talked about her here on the channel so many times before, and we've talked about making this video so many times before. But today, I'm being joined by the one and only Emily Hankins. Natural. <laughs> um, so Emily, for those people who don't know you, more for you to start with, but for those people who don't know you, who are you? Who is Emily Hankins? Well, um, I am a cake painting specialist, so I, you know, I specialise in cocoa butter painting and I paint wedding cakes primarily, um, but I also teach and that's something that I really, really love. I would like to point out, she says she's a cake painting specialist. She literally just won the Cake Masters Magazine Award for Best Painted Cake yes. 2022. Yes. At yes. the same awards where I won, Rising Star of the year, <laughs> 2022. Award winners right here. We are. We should yeah. have, we should have we put should them on the table. Yeah, Mine is the over there. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. Paranoid that I just heard the door. I probably didn't. I'm going to go and check the door. <laughs> it's all natural. <laughs> He's peering out the window now, guys. Sometimes, like, the doorbell... I've got two doorbell things, <laughs> one in here and one in the office, and the one in here doesn't always ring. <laughs> um, so, anyway, you are very much kind of like one of the pioneers of this type of artistry, aren't you? There's yeah. Probably yeah. you, Rose on the Cake. Yep. Um, it's Natasha Collins. Natasha Collins yeah. was who else I was thinking of. And yeah. then there's a couple of other people who are kind of coming up at the moment yeah. who I'm very excited about. Yeah. But you have a very distinctive style as well, don't you? Yeah, I think my just my style is very different to um, maybe some of those other people because I come from a kind of graphic design illustration background. So when I used to paint on canvas many years ago, um, I always painted with acrylic paints and oil paints. Mm -hmm. um, so my style is very precise and very... The paint that I use, the cocoa butter paint, translates really well if you're used to painting with oil paints or acrylic paints. Uh -huh. Whereas I think a lot of other cake painters have more of a kind of watercolour style. Yeah. Um, so that works very well if you're painting maybe with dusts or mixed with like a um, like a rejuvenator or an alcohol so, or yeah, something. So, yeah, like a strong alcohol, so it's a different it? sort of style and I think you know my work is very floral and it's very graphic so it's very bold and graphic. I started doing this like 10 years ago you know it's been 10 years now since I've been it's you know really since I long time. my business. I was like 12. <laughs> me too yeah mm -hmm. me too. Yeah. You know back back then people weren't doing this. No. So I think I was really kind of in the right place at the right time and it's been really lovely to see painted cakes have a real kind of evolution in that time. Well, they're, they're now, most of the, the big cake shows have a painted cake category, yeah, don't they? Absolutely. Obviously the award shows now yeah. recognise painted cake within its own category, so it's yeah. really exciting and yeah. as I say, so excited that you're here because Emily <laughs> is going to show me mm -hmm. how to paint on, well I say on cake, um, I was supposed to have covered some cakes for this video. Our beautifully covered cakes. And then I forgot, so yeah. instead we've we've covered some cake boards, um, which I'm told is actually easier. So I would actually recommend it if you're starting out on your cake painting journey, covering cake boards is a really good way of practicing and playing. Mm -hmm. It's like your little canvas. Because then you don't have to do the kind of almost like... Absolutely. And you haven't got to worry about the faff of a perfectly covered cake and then having that kind of blank canvas moment where you're like well I don't want to touch it now because it I'm looks kind perfect. I'm kind of like that now. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fine. We've been talking about this for a long time Rob. We're we gonna have. Do and also we've been talking about it for a long time this morning. <laughs> I've been here for about two hours and I found every single way I could possibly find every reason to delay us starting. Start <laughs> but we're going to do it. So before we begin, yeah. there's kind of you've got your like essential kit haven't you? Yes. I'll starting you with your paintbrush collection, which actually, again, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, Emily sent me these. I did. About two years ago. And they're completely untouched. Yeah, they are, because I was saving them <laughs> for this video. 
Yeah. So, and also, how quickly was I able to put my hand on them? And you knew exactly so, where they were. Exactly. Organisation. Yeah. But what else do I need? So, cocoa butter paint is a mixture of two things. It's a mixture of cocoa butter, funnily enough. Makes sense. Yeah. And dust colours. So, the cocoa butter that I'm using, well, all of the things I'm using are Squire's Kitchen, really. Other um, brands are available. Other brands are absolutely available. I just, I like these because they come as callettes, but I think Saracino do the little callettes as well. I'll and other cool places, yeah, other places do. So, the callettes are really nice. Oh, we haven't got the little pots with the callettes in. The callettes, can I get the pot? <laughs> The cutlets are really nice because they're really easy to melt and really easy to handle. Um, you can get cocoa butter as a big block, um, but you have to, yeah, look, lovely little nuggets. They're like little chocolate buttons of cocoa butter. They're really, really Does it easy taste to nice? use. No, and I okay. have tried. <laughs> Wait till then. A little bit oily. They smell lovely. You can get it as a big block, but you have to like chisel away at the block mm -hmm. and you end up with it everywhere and it's a bit of a nightmare. So I would definitely recommend the Calettes if you're going to do it. Squires tend to be really good for stuff like that, don't they? Yeah, I tend to buy Squires Ice and Mole stuff. and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, and we're going to mix it with dust colours. Now it has to be a dust. Any dust, any dust will do, any dust that you've got, but it has to be a dusting colour. I mean, um, these ones have got your face on them. They've got my face on them. I know. How cool is that? Um, but so if I was to do this again, I could use my rainbow dust absolutely. powder colours. Yeah, cool. absolutely. So yeah. Although I think you sent me these as well. I think I might have I think they were also untouched. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, any dust. If you try and mix cocoa butter with like a gel or a paste colour, because the gels... Seize, isn't it? Exactly, because they've got a bit of water in them, it'll just end up with a lumpy mess. So you need to use a dust. Um, I also use a white dust, um, which I mix with everything. Now, again, all of the dust manufacturers out there do a white, but I'm using the Fractal Colours Whitener today. So this is um, essentially titanium dioxide, isn't it? Yes, so those of you is. who are watching from Europe, mainland Europe, yeah. you can't use this anymore no. because the EU have banned it. But if you're in the UK or America, Crack on. Crack on. <laughs> but yeah, again, lots of these are available, aren't they? Because I, I've yeah. got one that I can add to buttercream to yep. make that whiter and yeah. things like that. Anything really that's got the titanium dioxide in it. I mean, I like I like this because it comes in a big pot, really. And fractals are really nice because they are quite They're really finely fine. milled, aren't they? Yeah. Um, again, for those of you in Europe, lots of brands are really like concentrating at the moment on yeah, developing their own. like yeah. titanium dioxide free whiteners. Um, I think they're going for more of a, like a chalk base now. Absolutely. So, so there are there are alternatives, yeah. um, and I think the alternatives are getting better and better. Um, cool. So yeah, don't panic. You will be able to use them. Yeah. I must admit, I did have a bit of a panic when they thought that it was going to come in in this country because I was like, oh, what am I yeah. going to paint with? Because obviously <laughs> like, we might have just lost like half of our audience and like, well I can't do this. Next video. No, there's absolutely alternatives and you know, you don't have to use the white, we can, you know, you can use the other colours too, but you know, bear with us on that. So Cool. So we've got brushes, we've got yeah. cocoa butter, we've got colours. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to go? I think so. I mean, paintbrush wise, paintbrush wise, you want a paintbrush that is has got a synthetic bristle. So mm -hmm. don't go to your art shop and buy, you know, super fine, wonderful sable hair. Well, brushes. they could just buy yours. They could just buy mine. Currently out of stock, but they will be oh. back in stock soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you want something with a synthetic fibre bristle because the cocoa butter will effectively kill them. Um, because you're going to melt that cocoa butter in the bristles. It's going to set. You're going to melt it. It's going to set and natural fibres will just break away really mm -hmm. quickly. So you want a synthetic bristle brush. Um, and that's really all of the kit you need, other than a bowl of boiling water and a plate, which we're going to get in a minute. And that's to keep the um, cocoa butter melted, isn't the it? the cocoa butter melted. That's all you need. Oh, so stuff. Sweet. Um, yeah, you don't need loads of stuff for cocoa butter painting, which is also a really cool thing. Okay. <laughs> you ready for this? No. So we've got, for the, your benefit, we have a bowl of excruciatingly hot water, <laughs> it might have burned my fingers, with a plate on top. Yeah. Um, what's next? So I do this because it melts the cocoa butter and it's going to keep the paint warm and fluid while we're doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean lots of people do it in different ways like with a candle or various things but I just think this is the easiest way because you've always got a bowl and a kettle and you know a plate and you can move it around to wherever you're painting so it's mm -hmm. a really good way of doing it. So once your plate's got hot which happens really quickly, you're going to want to put some of these callettes onto okay. your um, plate. Now you only need a couple, you just want sort of like four or five to start with, 
you don't want to put like a whole handful on there because you'll end up with a swimming pool and then you'll be fighting with it the whole time. So just a couple and they melt really, really super quick. Um, once your plate's got hot. You'll notice if your water's not hot enough or when your water gets cools down, mm -hmm. things just will start to season and won't be ni as ni nice and fluid as they are now. So first thing we're going to start with is some white. That's okay. a lot of white. Yeah, you'll use more. I'm going to put some on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to use more white than anything really okay. with this because um, it's our base, kind of the base for every colour that we're going to be mixing. White tends to have the, the white does tend to have the body um, <laughs> that's next door <laughs> clearly decided that while we're filming this is absolutely the right time to just start um, being noisy for yeah. the first time ever anyway sorry I love the fact we both stopped like, like what's that? What is that I thought something was falling over base for everything base for everything um, it's got the the body to it the white so any mm -hmm. color that you mix with it will end up opaque mm -hmm. If you start mixing some of the colours and you find that they're translucent when you put them onto your board, then by adding just a tiny touch of white, you'll get a lovely opaque finish. I'm going to start by mixing. Look, my paintbrush. My paintbrush has got yellow in it. Paintbrush has got yellow in it. So I'm just going to rinse that through. Cocoa butter. You can mix the cocoa, um, wash the cocoa butter out of your paintbrush with. Um, hot water and massage a little bit of washing up liquid through it. Which brush are you using though? A nice flat brush. I like to use a flat brush because you can scoop your paint up and get it on. That one would be a good one. That one. Yeah. Cool. But sometimes you find there's a little bit of paint left in the brush. So when you start melting it in the cocoa butter, there'll be a little paint, bit of paint, but it's this fine. Is, this is why you just keep them for two years and don't touch them. Well, there, there is that, yeah, because they're lovely and clean now. Okay. So oh, we're going to mix the white first. So you're going to take some of the cocoa butter over to the white and mix it. You don't want them to bump into each other. Just scoop, just scoop it up, that's it. And then mix it with the white. And we're going to mix a nice puddle of, um, of white paint, really. And you want to kind of get mixing and start with a really good puddle of that white because then you don't have to keep going back and mixing it, really. And you want it to be the thickness of an acrylic paint. Don't be scared of mixing too much. You want to mix as much cocoa butter with that white as you can and get a really good puddle of it going on. Because when we start putting it on the board, we're going to put it on really thick. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll find that you'll use loads of paint. So you want to mix a good puddle of it. And on that note, what are we painting? <laughs> so we're going to paint some anemones today. And that's the flower, not the fish thing. That's a... <laughs> I know. I think they're spelt slightly differently, aren't they? I can never, you know, I can never remember which spelling is which. Yes, we're not painting sea anemones. Um, we're going to paint anemone flowers, and they're a really easy starter flower. I think there's different sort of um, shapes of flowers, and this is what I would call a saucer flower. So it's a a round flower with a round centre, petals that radiate all the way round. So it's a really easy flower to paint, and once you've mastered the kind of the structure of this one, you can change it slightly into all sorts of different flowers. So an anemone is a really good starter flower. It's quite quick to paint and quite easy. So how are you looking? How am I looking? Now you're spreading your paint out quite a lot, so it's not you're mixing more. But so it's, are you? Well, yeah, I know, but I've mixed more than you. Yeah. You need to keep mixing. Get okay. a really big, big um, puddle of it, rather than. Can't just help being dainty, am I right? <laughs> So we're going to start with some pink. So this is rose, but yeah, any pinky colour will do. And um, just put a tiny bit of that on your plate. Now, if you were painting on a coloured sugar paste, like a black or a different colour, good, good skills. Um, then you'd want to paint what we're doing in white first. Mm -hmm. But because we're painting on white, we don't need to do that. Um, so we're just going to put a little bit of that pink into the white just to make a light pinky colour. But anemones come, an come in all sorts of different colours, so you can do whatever colour you want, but we'll just do pink ones. So, an anemone flower. We're going to start by marking out the centre. Okay. Stop looking so terrified. Absolutely terrified. <laughs> just going to pick up some paint on your brush. I'm just going to melt the gack again. <laughs> or you can wipe. Okay. Right, so let's do it right smack bang in the middle of our board. Okay. I'm just going to paint a circle, so just 
really simple circle and that's just marking out the centre of our flower. Are you leaning on the board? Now I'm leaning on the board because I know this sugar paste is hard and you always want to paint on sugar paste that has hardened if you were okay. painting on it when it was soft but obviously if you're painting on a real cake and things you don't want to be leaning on it so a really good way of supporting your hand so it doesn't so you don't have to hover and shake is if you use your other hand on the table as a v in a v shape put this hand into it and then you don't have to lean on your board mm -hmm. um, you can just hover but it takes the shake away okay <laughs> So, just a simple circle in the middle. Oh my god, <laughs> so stressed. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Perfect. That's all you need. It's not really a circle though. That's there we fine. Go. That would do. That's fine. That's fine. It's all you need. And now we're going to position our leaves. Now, anemone flowers tend to have five, oh, not leaves, petals. Petals, okay. Anemone flowers tend to have five petals. Mm -hmm. I so, have made them out of sugar before. Have you? I have. Impressive. So you know exactly what one looks like, mm -hmm. so there's no excuse for your painting not to look like an anemone. Uh huh. So we want to put five petals around here. Now, you can. we can just start painting the petals, or you can mark them out before you start. So you can paint like a little spider. So you can do, yeah, that's going to be one side, that's going to be the other side of each of the petals going all the way around until you get to five. So that's one petal, two petals, three petals, four petals, five petals. Paint a little demented spider in the five. I've got mini so. petal. <laughs> there we go. So what I want you to do is cocoa butter is lovely because it's so thick you can scoop your paint up and get a lovely bit of texture into your painting. You can build up a nice ridged edge. So I'm gonna. I've got lots of paint on the top of my brush, mm -hmm. not much underneath. And I'm just gonna apply that paint onto the board, really thickly, in a nice open shape with a little scallop on the top, and then we're gonna smooth that paint out. So I'm gonna do it again for you, so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, got a nice little scallopy petal shape. And can you see the ridges around mm -hmm. the edge? That gives you real definition. So you can do it by just doing it without the paint first, without the big ridgy edge first. So I'm going to go up one side, do a little organic wiggle over the top, and then up the other side to meet it. So we've got the shape, and then you scoop up your paint and you're just going to push it into the edges, push it into those edges and leave that ridge behind. So you've got a really nice um, defined edge to your petal. And then we're going to fill it in. And you want to be nice and smooth with your brush strokes when you fill it in. So The fear is real. <laughs> it's going to be fine. So, you're gonna. Are you literally gonna watch that closely? Yeah, yeah I am. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, up one side, organic wiggle over the top, and down the other side. That's it. Now into a nice curve. That's it. Oh, good lord. That's it. Apologies if you can hear the. Oh no, ruined it. Apologies <laughs> if you can hear the neighbours, and also clearly I can't talk and paint at the same time. <laughs> I'll do. I'll do the talky bits while you're painting. It's fine. It's fine. That's Flowers what... are all very That's why different. I love painting nature because nature is in its nature imperfect. So um, you know, if if your enemy ends up with four petals, one blew off in the wind. It's fine. Smashing it. You can't see it at all, so I'm going to pretend. In fact, for the whole video, I'm just going to start it out like I'm doing an amazing job, and at the end, I'll switch our boards and be like, look what I did. Getting the edges is the hardest part, and it's the bit that everybody really struggles with. She didn't mention um, that before we started. Well, just no, I didn't want to, you know, you, you look scared already, so I didn't want to, you know, scare you with more stuff. Um, but it is worth taking a little bit of time to try and get your head around the ridged edges, because it really gives whatever you're painting definition. Um, makes it look more precise that's it and then make sure you smooth down like rob's doing he's smoothing down the inside of his petals so that the paint looks lovely and smooth it looks quite petally like veined it looks very petally and veined and when we start putting the shading on and using those lovely brush strokes 
um, you'll get a really lovely petally effect with the brush strokes and the veins. I'm going to be honest, that I do watch is like, a very all of your petal. videos. <laughs> so I, I've seen you in action many times. <laughs> That is a very impressive petal. Thank you. Oh, go away. <laughs> Not you. Sometimes, no, no. Well, um, well, won't take it personally. Sometimes you might need to just wipe your brush. Um, that's lovely. That'll do. Yep. Stop that. Brilliant. So you need to do that four more times. Oh, really? <laughs> well, we're done. <laughs> there we go. That was how to paint. <laughs> so we're going to do that, that really four count. more. Where did that come from? Four more times. <laughs> four more times. So we're going to get five petals. Don't worry if some of them bump into each other because it actually adds something to the realness mm -hmm. of it. Um, try and keep them all roughly the same size. You want your overall flower to be a circle. So if you start with quite a big petal, make sure they all end up roughly the same size. So we'll whiz round. So do you freehand of all of your designs? 99% of the time I do. Um, That's insane to me. So I, yeah, I do freehand most things. If I'm painting something very specific, sometimes I do birds or animals, um, or maybe a flower that I've never painted before, then I'll use a template. And you can, gosh, you can go online and find, you know, line drawings of all sorts of different flowers and things on Pinterest. Um, you could draw it out on paper first if you're not confident going straight onto the board or onto your cake, and then just trace it onto some parchment pop it over your cake or your board or whatever you're working on, use a scribing tool just to go around the edges, and then you'll have a little indentation in the sugar paste that you can kind of follow as a guideline. Cool. What I was trying to do there was set you up to like tell us that you've got templates on your website that we can download. Yeah, there's some of them as well. Yeah. <laughs> Read a horse to water, people. <laughs> templates. So we're painting some spring flowers, these anemones and things, and there's some. these are colouring pages actually that I've made up on my website um, that are available, and I'll give, um, Rob will give you the link um, in the this video. The link will be in the video description down below. That's what I meant to say, yeah. Um, so that you can find them, and you can print them off and use them as a template, or you can use it as a colouring page if you want, just to practice your shading, because lots of people get confused about where the shading goes. Can I use them for colouring? I've got some pencils, I could just do that. <laughs> you could just sit here and do some colouring in while I'm doing the painting. So you can absolutely use templates, um, but I do, yeah, for, for my work when I'm working on wedding cakes, I do um, do 99% of things freehand. That's very impressive. <laughs> I like to teach freehand too, so um, I much prefer teaching people how to paint freehand because I think you spend more time thinking about your own um, brush strokes and about what you're doing and developing your own um, skill than worrying that it doesn't look like mine. So that's why I tend to teach freehand too. Mm -hmm. And if you accidentally smush your scallop, that's fine, isn't it? Because yeah. again, all flowers are... All flowers are different. Cool. Are you going to laugh at every time we start filming? <laughs> Makes me jump every time you do it. I'm like, what? What's he doing? I'm going to explain that to people. So when you're filming a video from multiple different cameras, what you do is you clap so that you can then see that sound on all the different bits of footage and you can sync it so that you then have all of the video footage synced. It's like the same principle as a clapperboard in like Hollywood. Every time I do it, she jumps out of her skin and then starts laughing. <laughs> There's no warning though, you're just like walking over here and suddenly turning on the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be give away. Anyway, anyway, so we have stage. painted passable petals. Okay, gonna, oh, show, I've, I've show also smushed people. my cake board with my very heavy arm. <laughs> so this is mine. From a distance, I bet it looks great. Yeah, yeah. It looks lovely close up as well, I can tell you that. So we've done our first layer. Mm -hmm. So this is our base layer. So the next thing we need to do is... How many layers are there? It depends really what you're painting. Okay. But with this, there's probably only going to be sort of three or four layers. So, okay. And they get a lot quicker from so here So I have to do it three or four more times. <laughs> cool. But it gets a lot quicker from here on in. Okay. Um, this is definitely the hardest bit. And this is the bit that takes all of the time when you're painting a cake is getting all your base layers on. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just going to add on our plates, we're going to add a little bit more of our pink to make a mid colour. So we started with the lightest colour, always start with your lightest colour and then we're going to mix a mid colour. So somewhere that's in between, you know, the, the raw colour and the light colour that you've mixed already. So you want a, a mid pink. So I always say, that your darker colour, your shadow, 
that your petal will always be darkest where it meets the centre, mm -hmm. and it will be darkest where things overlap it. Um, but so if we always start our shading where the petal meets the centre, so I'm going to apply my paint to that bottom section, and I'm going to take a lot of paint out of my brush. I don't want too much paint in my brush, and I'm just going to use my brush to blend that colour up. And can you see that I'm not really because the light's reflecting. <laughs> I can see this paint. Shall I do? Lovely, thank you. I'm following the curve of my petal. So I'm following the curve of my petal. I'm not doing straight lines, I'm doing nice curved lines. I'm going to be that irritating person now who starts when you're still explaining. <laughs> Go for it. So at the bottom, and then curve and spread that paint up with your brush. And you need to be quite quick because that paint will set. And you don't need too much paint. You know, the amount of paint we used for that first layer, um, and now we're using a lot less paint doing this second layer of shading. So you're going to do that on each on each petal. That's looking really nice. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's looking lovely. As I say, because what you can't see is there's a massive window there because natural light is helpful. However, it means that the light is then bouncing off Emily's paint. <laughs> so I can't actually see what she's painted. I can see the outline. Okay but it's just shiny. <laughs> and that's going to be my excuse for the rest of the video if anything mm -hmm. goes wrong. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Lies. Lies. <laughs> really lies. Okay, what's next? So, next stage, um, we've done our mid shading, now mm -hmm. we're going to do our dark shading. Okay. So we want to mix some of that pink. And what happens if you've run out of space on your plate? Um, well, because we're still using the same colour, that's not a problem. If you go into your pink dust that you've got there and just mix it by itself with what's left in your brush really. Um, that's fine. What I would do is when we change colours then we can change plates or we can clean a space on your plate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if I'm painting a really big cake and I've got lots of different colours going on then I'll have a plate for each colour. Um, but yeah, try not to spread yourself around your plate too much. She didn't tell me that till afterwards so <laughs> technically I'm not to blame. <laughs> so we've got our nice dark colour. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just use a tiny, tiny bit of this. So keep your paintbrush nice and warm on your plate. And then I'm just going to, again, apply the paint in the same place and just spread it out. But I'm not going to go as far. So I'm just going to go up through the middle, up the sides a little bit. So I'm not covering all of the shading I've done already. And it's quite nice to see some of those brush strokes because like you said earlier, it kind of almost adds to this veiny nature of the petal. So, you know, really quick little strokes, soft, use the tippy top of your brush and just blend it through. Obviously, if you're working on a big tool cake, it's tricky to move it too much, but that's why we like practicing on boards. It makes it a bit easier. So really, by not covering the dummies, I was doing us a favour. I think it was, you know, it's made your life a lot easier. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. Easier, it's the wrong word. <laughs> What's really fun is knowing that you're watching so closely doesn't freak me out in the slightest. <laughs> I do one-to-ones quite often in my studio, and um, I think that's the bit that freaks everybody out. <laughs> what, I'm happiest with that one so far. I think that that's my favourite. It's going to be my favourite pattern. It beautiful. And painting should be, you know, it should be relaxing. It shouldn't be too str Well, okay, maybe not with me. Faster! 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 Do it now! Do it properly! Quick, your brush is drying out. <laughs> well, normally it's... So relaxing. So do you ever paint with anything else? No, no. I always paint with cocoa brush paint. Even when you're painting a wall mural? Oh no, well, if I'm painting on a wall, I don't Again, think. Again, trying to set you up, Emily, so you can tell us a bit more about yourself while I'm doing the same thing for the fifth time. So not <laughs> I do occasionally paint wall murals. Um, not very often, but I do them occasionally. And, oh, look. <laughs> and I do use, you know, regular paint, like emulsion or whatever, like for, for painting on a wall. And I must admit, I get frustrated with it because it doesn't move in the same way that this does. And also, you know, on the rare occasion I do paint on canvas, the beauty of cocoa butter paint is you can let your water go cold, pop the plate somewhere safe, um, if you're maybe doing it over a couple of days, come back to it, remelt your paint, 
and you've got all of your colours that you've mixed. But in real life, real paint doesn't do that. Um, you know, like emulsion, you've mixed your colour and then it's dried and it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, so I much prefer cocoa butter painting. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Show it that way. Look how lovely that is. I've just shown them all that I'm reusing old boards now. <laughs> Thank you, board. Yeah, but that is also a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, recycling. You, recycling, and you know, even if you are painting on a cake, sometimes having a cake board, a covered cake board next to you, to use as a little bit of a sketch pad and a tester, is actually quite a good thing to do anyway. So, reusing is always a good thing. Um, on that note, if you think Emily should paint my filming backdrop over there that we've been discussing in about the last five videos now. Head to the comments. <laughs> Do I need to like say how many comments that I want to see? I love uh, that you think I'll get like a multiple. <laughs> There'll be like three. <laughs> Anything over three, three and I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, paint, painting something that looks realistic, something that you could pick up off your cake board, is all about light and shade. Mm -hmm. So at the moment we're creating depth, but it's still a little bit flat. So we want to add some really dark shading, and this is the bit that freaks everybody out. So we're going to go in with a darker dust. So I've got some Thrift, it's called Thrift, this colour, which is like a dark burgundy colour. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that on my plate. A little bit. It's wow. loads. Okay, it's loads. That'll do. That'll do. And, thank you, always put your lids back on. Um, we're going to mix some of that, and I'm still using the same paintbrush, we're still using the same paintbrush, we don't need to change brushes or anything. Um, so you've got a really, really dark colour now, and we're only going to want a tiny bit of this. So you might want to use your tissue and just clean your brush out, and in exactly the same way as we've done before, even less than that. Just add a little bit right at the base of each of the petals. And this dark colour is going to make your flower pop. It's going to make it look more realistic. I think, you know, sometimes we all look at paintings that we've done or other people have done that maybe look a little bit flat. Um, and it's just because you haven't got that definition between light and shade. So having that really dark little bit of shading at the bottom really helps with that. And again, you know, really quick little brush strokes, really quick brush strokes with the tip top of your brush. That's it, that's great. Um, and then working around really quickly. You don't need too much at all, but it really adds, don't be scared of the dark shading, it really adds something to what you're painting. Okay. I like yours more. <laughs> I need that. We're going to add a nice textured centre in a minute. Cool. Which is going to make it look a bit more real. So that's our, you know, last level of shading. <laughs> Editing Rob here. Um, so Emily and I actually worked on these paintings for hours, and I'm, I'm not joking when I say I have literal hours of footage. And I remember when we started filming, I said to Emily, I want this video to be around about 10 to 15 minutes long. As you can see, if you've stuck with us this long, we are now, I think, around about 30 something minutes. So um, I've made the reluctant decision to kind of dump quite a lot of footage, um, which is a shame because Emily gives so many amazing tips but equally, you've stuck with us this long already, and um, thank you for that. But um, I also don't expect you to sit and watch a video that's essentially four hours long. So what we're going to do is jump ahead to when we're kind of finishing, finishing things off, um, and then we'll show you what we achieved. And um, yeah, you can tell me what you think down in the comments. Were we videoing when I asked if you were worried that I was going to come for your gig and you started laughing? <laughs> I think the camera might have missed that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That happens. <laughs> anyway, when I finish this last little bit, um, people watching, yes, bless you for how long you've been watching. If you're still there, if you've made it this far, if you like, if people want to know like more about this and would like to have a go and things like that, where can they come and find you to to do this? So you can find me in all the usual places on social media um, at Emily Hankins Cakes. And I do have an online masterclass on my website. Ooh. I what I will do as well is I will put Emily's um, 
social media links down in the video description as well, so you don't have to go hunting for her. I will literally have like Facebook, Instagram. She's not really active on. You're on TikTok though, I'm aren't on you? TikTok, I don't yeah. do TikTok anymore. <laughs> as you know. Um, I only did TikTok to make my, my teenage son jealous <laughs> or embarrassed. More, more, more embarrassed. to the point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can find me there, and yeah, I have an online masterclass on my website, which is available. Um, and I do lots of live videos on Facebook and Instagram and things and there's lots of tutorials and, and little live videos and things around. Well, um, so but if you were to give somebody like, this is my number one top tip, come here first, would you say your masterclass is, is the best place Yeah, to go? absolutely. And it's a real kind of start to finish masterclass. It's everything from drawing out a template, marking up a cake and where you're going to put your flowers, to mixing the paint, how to get your paint to the correct consistency, to painting a range of different flowers. And, you know, the masterclass is how to create a very kind of decorative three-tier cake. But all of those little, you know, tips are things that you can do individually. You don't have to create the whole big creation. Cool, cool. You well, should be really Should we show you that? that? Yes, The absolutely. grand reveal. Are you ready? Absolutely. You've got to do it out the right way. There we go. So there we go. That was my <laughs> afternoon. After How long have we been talking about doing this now? Oh, years. Years, literally years. years. So after however many years, this is my attempt, first attempt at painting with cocoa butter on wall cake. 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 So I'm actually really proud of that. You should be super proud of it. It's gorgeous. It's lovely shading. Thank you. Beautiful shapes. Look at these ridges. I know. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for coming down. It's an absolute it has pleasure. Been so much fun. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, and it, genuinely, if there is interest in Emily coming to the cake school to do a class here, I know. To be fair, my YouTube subscribers are kind of spread all over. All over the place. But if any locals are watching and you would like Emily to come and do a class in the cake school, do let me know down in the comments, and we can see what we can do. And if you'd like to see her back here on YouTube as well, yeah. let me know in the comments. But yes, so make sure to follow Emily. What was that? Emily. <laughs> Make sure to find that follow wow. <laughs> I've 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 worked him hard today. Really There's been a lot of exhausted. concentrating. <laughs> um make sure to follow Emily on social media. Um, if you are interested in painting on cakes, do check out her masterclass again. I'll put the links down in the video description and hopefully we'll see you back here again sometime soon for something else. Maybe I'll show you on camera how to make scones properly. <laughs> but until then, as always, <laughs> take care and happy baking. Bye, Bye. everyone.